Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm at the Church of Ireland old graveyard here behind me in Kilrush in County Clare. Um, there's a number of vaults in this old graveyard and one vault in particular of Colonel Crofton Moore Vandalour and uh, he was um, a ruthless man here apparently back in the day he was evicting tenants from their homes so we'll go around and look at his mausoleum and a couple of other graves here as well Right guys, so this is the Church of Ireland area here and you can see there's a couple of vaults as you come in the entrance and uh, the graveyard is it's in a bad state to be honest it's there was a lot of flooding here um, there was a lot of flooding here in the old graveyard and there's a number of graves badly flooded so we'll go this direction first and look at a couple of vaults now the grass is extremely wet here today so i won't go into that area that's the peacock vault you can see there we have another vault here it's the hazlet and I've never heard of that surname before, Hazlitt, if anybody has heard of it. Now, the strange thing about this vault is that the, the headstone above here, it's erected by Anne Hazlitt of Kilrush as a tribute of esteem and affection to the memory of her beloved husband, John, died in 1890. Now, if you can see there closely, I don't know if you can see with the sun, we have this chain here that goes straight across and it goes around the top of the headstone. So that chain is actually supporting that headstone from, I'm sure, you know, it's going to fall over very, very soon. So that's supporting that with the chain there. We have the O'Doherty vault over here in this one. Beautiful style. And that's in memory of um, Margaret Doherty, wife of Garrett Doherty, who died in 1886. I'll just give you one example on this side here. Um, and I'll go in this way here. I have a beautiful one here. And it's erected by Dr. Thomas B. O'Donnell in fond remembrance of the many virtues and departed worth of his ever to be lamented and beloved wife Anne O'Donnell who died 3rd of January 1859 so he got this monument erected here for in his wife's memory now there's an old um, there's an obelisk headstone here and it's just completely after falling over into into fell into bits and i don't know if you can see that down there but this is what i was talking about coming in is the amount of water look at that the amount of water that's lodged at that gravesite and sadly the whole thing is toppled over and you can see where it starts here and comes down around and it broke that much that the top part 
just there of the obelisk has landed over beside that grave. So the grass is it's wet here, so I don't want to go in around here too much. We have a another mausoleum here. That's decaying. And they have a kind of a, a fence protecting it going around it there. But it's a beautiful mausoleum. And uh, look at the stonework here and the of Jesus crucifixion scene on it there we have the sacred heart in the middle and we have this on the other side of it the mausoleum so that's beautiful there and uh, we'll read the inscription it says pray for the souls of Matthew Kelly who died the 31st of July 1880 age 86 years old and of his wife Mary and she died in 1878, age 82. And their children, John, Mary, Agnes, and David, whose remains are interred here. So it's a beautiful old mausoleum. And you can just see the other side of it there. What I was talking about, see the way the roof is kind of breaking apart. So they're they're doing that up. Now just the other side or the back of that mausoleum then. I'll take you around and show you. Um this one here, now this one has been I suppose you could call it like modernized in some way. It was an old vault and they have completely plastered all the vault and put a new stone slabs on top of this vault and it's in loving memory of Michael J. Carmody who died in 1961 his daughter Mary died in 1937 and then we have Bridget Carmody died in 24 to December Christmas Eve 1977 so they've done all this up here you can see the timber work around the frame of the door of the vault and the original old brick is down underneath but they've they've um, supported that and kept it done up so there is family looking after this so it seems like that um, nobody fixes up anything here really on this you do it yourself, I suppose, you know, at your own cost, maybe, your family. I don't see any, um, I don't see any kind of um, a community thing here where they're fixing up the place, because it isn't in a bad way and it needs to be fixed up. So just down here now we have a bell. J. Murphy founder Dublin 1868 so that's just an old bell there with a harp on it and some shamrocks and the bell is actually there I don't want to wake up the whole place it's early in the morning <laughs> so that's the bell so we'll get on our journey and we'll keep going so just straight ahead you'll see there that's the Vandalour mausoleum and uh, I was telling you there at the start of the video, he evicted over 1,000 tenants back in the 1800s during the famine times. Very hard times. People couldn't pay their rents. Um, and they even used a battering ram to break in the doors of these people's houses to evict them from their homes. So in one way, I suppose, he was kind of you know, there's a story that he, he donated land here in Kilrush and they built a convent and like a workhouse on the on the land. So that was the, probably the good side of, of his life. But then apparently he kind of changed and evicted people from their homes. So this is the Taylor vault here. And these vaults have the door down below and then you have the headstone up the top. 
So that was erected by Ellen Taylor in remembrance of her husband, George, who died in 1891. Um, now, I will try and have a look inside these vaults as well. I'll be looking inside to see. Um, there's a huge one there as well with all the ivy over it. Uh, William Henry Purse, I think, P-E-R-S-S-E. -S -S -E. And there's a William Blair Esquire. William Blair Esquire who died. Um, Aged one year and five months. One year and what? five months, yeah. Maybe I might yeah. be able to get in there and read it for you a bit closer, guys. Be careful because it's so wet. So it is very wet, but... The cemetery, yeah, it's flooded, so we have to be careful where we go. So, Sacred to the memory of William Henry Purse. Never heard of that name. P-E-R-S-S-E. -S -S -E. um, beloved and second. Um, just trying to read it here. William Blair Esquire, who died January the 15th. And the date is under the ivy there. Let's see, can I read it? Um... 18, 1849, I think that is, aged one year and five months. And you have also Bedelia Purse, Esquire, 77th Regiment of Mealick, Mealick County, Galway. Now, I've been down around Galway and I've, I know Mealick because I'm from Galway myself so that's interesting who died in 1863 age 57 so that's the old vault of the Purse family so I go around and have a look and see can I look inside um, one of the vaults I want to see what kind of um Damage is done inside these. So you can just see in there, guys, there's a shelf there. Um, there's another shelf on the right. Now, you can see... Just to the right of the light of the torch there, do you see where the torch is shining this way? You can see water. Look at all that water that's in there. So that, look at that. You can see, there's probably remains down there as well, bones and stuff. Um, the camera, it's hard to, to look in, maybe this way. Now we can kind of see a bit better. Um, but that's all water there. Look at that. There is actually bones. Look at that, guys underneath all that water there's bones and bits of old iron and probably coffin and stuff underneath all that vault and there's shelves either side as well left and right mm -hmm. so another um i'll just take this off zoom another one there but i wouldn't even walk there because we went last night yeah the now there's one there just in front and i'll zoom in and show you i won't go out there because it is extremely wet see the reeds that shows them it's like a swamp. So you can see the side of that chest tomb there has completely caved in. All the brick has fallen apart. So all that area there you see, like marsh kind of area there, that's all completely flooded. So all these graves are actually sinking in this old graveyard. Um, another vault there, you can see the roof is, is decaying on that. So we'll go around and keep going. So yeah, it's extremely dangerous and I'm surprised they don't have it taped off actually. And you know, I go this way actually because there's a path here. So I'm surprised they don't have it actually taped off because it is extremely dangerous. You know, and anybody that came in or does come in to visit here to be careful. There's loads of white crosses and there, yeah. Underwater. I wonder are they children's graves? I don't know, that little cage one there certainly looks like it. Yeah. But there's reeds, and where you see reeds, it's flooded. And we tried last night and we got all We were actually down here yesterday evening to have a look around the place, and there was areas we just could not go to. 
Um, you know, there's an area over there, if you can just see where I'm planting right there, full of water, about three, four foot of water in that grave. Now you can read some of these ones here. This is directed by Mary Meehan in memory of her beloved son Thomas, who died the 1st of February, and there's no, I can't see the date, that age, 38 years old. So some of those you can see. You can see the water there? That is completely, completely um, flooded. And I wish I could get in a bit closer. I'm just going to try to move in as close as I can because I really want you to see. There, guys, look at that. All that area around there, if you can see where my finger is pointing, that's all flooded. That's a grave area there that's completely flooded. You can just see all the old graves there broken. All that area completely covered in water. More tombs around there. You can see all those tombs. Vaults. Flooded there as well. Just under there's full of water they're all breaking in bits um that one as well this grave here is completely broken and we've seen a lot of that on our travels here in county clare um just total devastation here in these old graveyards um and it looks like in this tomb here somebody has actually put in the date 1750 here like on the cement to let people know what year it is um i'll just pan around here and show you that's the old church there and those vaults where we were it's a beautiful church and a beautiful graveyard don't get me wrong but it just needs an awful lot of work done to it and it's sad to see the graves a beautiful uh Daffodils there, look at that in that grave. Isn't that beautiful? It's an old stone slab in there. And they just put kind of slate around it. I suppose to try to, this is an example of somebody trying their best, I suppose, that can't afford to do anything else, you know, to beautify the grave, I suppose. It's actually kind of upsetting, do you know that? I kind of feel a little bit sad, just, I thought just completely underwater. Look at all those stone tombs, huge one here. Look at the thickness, I'll show you how thick these are, look at that. That's about a foot, I'd say, and a half, maybe a foot wide, that one. More tombs there. So it is very, very sad to see that the place is left in disrepair. All these old graves are forgotten about. And, you know, that's the reason why we do these videos as well, to come into these places and cover all these locations, to spread the word around, you know, to people who hopefully might see this video and maybe, who knows, in a couple of months time or a couple of weeks time, I always keep an eye on the internet as well. I Google the places I've been to see, has there anything been done? And some places have been restored and all that. So maybe... Uh, where would they even start? Like, they'd have to pump out the water? The water would have oh. to come out, yeah, and they'd have to do, oh, just, you know, it's... Like, here's another one. And if I have the torch here, so I, the torch will help me to show you. I wonder what that, there's, if you can see that in the video, I don't know, that's all water underneath those stones, all water. And uh, I have to be careful. So that's the old rune. Now that's 13th century, that old church rune there in front of you. And just beyond that is the Vandalore Mausoleum. So we'll be going over there soon to have a look at that. There's an old vault over there as well. I don't know if I'll be able to get over there. I'm going to try. Now, hopefully with the dry weather we had yesterday and today, 
It mightn't be too bad. But there's just a sea of graves around here, guys. More flooding there. There's more graves in there. There are just stone slabs all over this graveyard and it's flooded. So I'm going to try and walk over. And I don't want to try walk on any of these graves. So I'm going to try and avoid walking on them to get you. You can just see what I'm talking about there. Look at all that water has come in on top of that grave. And it's, it's actually, all those weeds are grown there like marsh. And that's the kind of stuff that you'd see that would, um, that's the kind of stuff you'd see that would grow by a, a, a river bank, you know, a Shannon bank or a river. Um, I'm just trying to show you this vault here. Now they do put new plaques on them. So we have Patrick Casey here who died the 5th of May in 1996 and his sister Mary died in 1998. So there's people still being buried in these old vaults. Um, 1998. And I don't know if I see anything in there guys. Probably won't. You can just see inside. Look at what it looks like inside. Look at all that old grass and... There's bits of crosses down there, maybe. I see a gold cross, look at that. That's a gold cross there, guys. It looks like a handle of a coffin or something like that. It's perfect condition. Like You can see the gold on it all the time. Just show them this. So this is a, another area. The other side of the old church ruin here. It's 13th century, this church. There are all the stone slab graves all around there. Maybe show them the I'll show you around because actually when you go around the other side there, yeah, the mausoleum, you can actually um, walk around the perimeter area of the the mausoleum <laughs> and it kind of gives you that little bit of a, Whoa. more of a, a, a bird's eye view, I suppose, of the area and the vaults. Look at that vault there, all the brick. I don't think I looked in that one over there, so it's extremely difficult to get around here now, so. Oh, very There's a war grave, J. MacDonald died in 1916. Look at the old trees that's growing out of this here. You have all the barks or bits of the tree there coming out through this chest to him. Nature taking over again. Now, there's a beautiful name I just spotted here. So I'm going to try and read this um, stone slab here. Look at that. Erected in memory of Tobias Sullivan, who departed this life 1842, age 58. Isn't that a beautiful name, Tobias? A real old-fashioned name. name. Godfrey. Godfrey, is it? We have another one here. You can look at that. There's the church. So this one here is sacred to the memory of Godfrey Taylor Kilrush, who departed this life the 10th of September in 1874, age 74. And his beloved wife, Eliza Con Cannon Taylor. And she died on the 9th of January, 1841, age 54. And then below that you have also a memory of their son, Captain John Taylor, who departed this life the 21st of December, 1854, age 45. So we have their son there who was a captain as well. Um, so I'm going to make my way back around over there is where we're going now, guys. Over there to see the Vandalour. The Vandalour Mausoleum. Oh, that's in bad shape yeah. there as well. This one here, you can see a big hole in it. It's probably full of water as well. Mm -hmm. Full of water. 
yeah, so we'll go over and have a look at the Vandalore mausoleum and um, the man who evicted over a thousand people from their homes. This is erected in memory of John Lucas Esquire Kilrush and his family. Now I'm not sure about this church what date it was erected but I'm going to guess it's it's 1800s anyway definitely maybe the middle of the 1800s so we've just seen them ones there that were decaying so it's a beautiful morning here in Clare Kilrush and we're traveling on a bit further today to see what else we can find on our travels. So we're just coming up and the, the only thing I've seen they've done in this graveyard is this path here. They've made this kind of a walkway here. But like it doesn't make sense just making a path when all the rest of the graves are falling apart. It wouldn't be the paths I'd be worried about. Okay. Yeah, I showed that, yeah. 1750. Yeah, so there you have all these vaults. and So the, what we're going to do now, we're going up here now. This is the Vandalore. That's the mausoleum, a huge mausoleum. So you have this man here overlooking all the other graves built in a very extravagant mausoleum. Steps are made out of tombstones. Steps are made out of tombstones because I can't see where they got the idea to do this because it doesn't make sense to me. They have a path that comes up and a, there's a, a gravestone at the very top of it, two gravestones at the top of the path. So that doesn't make sense, people walking on that. But this is the final resting place here of Colonel Crofton Vandalour, and he was an MP as well here in the Kilrush area and apparently the, the Vandalours owned a lot of you know property, land, even townlands and stuff like that. So that's the mausoleum they have. So we'll read the inscription on this one here. I might need the torch. So, sacred to the memory of Crofton Moor Vandalour of Kilrush, and he passed away on the 8th of November 1881, eldest son of the Right Honourable John Ormsby and Lady Frances Vandalour. He passed away from this life to join his beloved wife, it says, uh, regretted by his sorrowing family, relations and friends. His existence was spent in endeavouring to do good. Now, other people might have different opinions on that, but I'm not here to judge the dead. Amongst all around him, for many years, he represented the county of Clare in the Imperial Parliament. And here you have also to the memory of Crofton Toller Vandalore, Lake Captain Ten to his heirs and seven to Dragoon Guards, son of Colonel Crofton Moore and Lady Grace Vandalour, who died and is interred in, you can just see there, Brussels in Belgium. The 8th of May, 1884, age 44. So that's one side of it. You can see all the stonework there and designs that's around the, the door of it, of the mausoleum. And then you have the the coat of arms up there then, you have a bird on top, three stars and a shield. It's the family's coat of arms up over the door of the mausoleum. And here then we have sacred to the memory of Grace, the second daughter of Hector, second Earl of Norbury, the affectionate and lamented wife of Crofton Moor Vandalour who departed this life on 
the 2nd of June, 1872, age 59. So that's Colonel Vandeleur's wife, Grace. And this mausoleum was erected by her husband for the Vandeleur family as a tribute of love and honour to one who for 40 years proved herself a devoted wife, mother and friend. Kindness of heart, many virtues. And then you have down below that then John Toller Vandeleur, a twin it says there in brackets, departed at St. Mary's, interred, sorry, in St. Mary's Church, Dublin. He was born in 1836 and he died in 1837, so he was only a year old. And he's interred in St. Mary's Church in Dublin. So there's loads of Vandeleurs there. And that, and it actually, if you look around here, you have your 13th century church ruin just there. And... You can actually see, I'll just show you real quick in here. There's nothing in here to see really. It's just those four or three or four walls there just standing. There's no graves in here or anything like that. But it looks right out when you come back through the old church room. You can see the mausoleum there. Look at that. So we'll have a look, guys. I'm going to look inside the mausoleum and see what we can find. Right guys, so we're going to look inside the mausoleum here and see what we can see. And there we can see inside, just to the right hand side there, we can see shelves. Now there's no coffins in those shelves. Um, down below maybe, if I can manoeuvre it. Just straight ahead there on your left, you can see one sticking out. That's a coffin there. And one above that as well. Um, I'll try and look down here. There's a bar there in the way, actually. Yeah, so the shelves there. Now, I might try and go over this side. I think it might be better to see what's on this side. There now, guys, you can see that better. That's inside. You see the way they have it built inside? So they're empty, those shelves there. Now, down below that, if I can get down below that... I can't see anything there at the moment now. Those shelves seem to be empty, and this is one's up the very top. Up the very top there. I don't see any there. So just there, guys, where the light is shining, that's a lead coffin. And above that then we have the other coffin. And the vault is designed like you have that arch kind of entrance. So as you enter the mausoleum, you have shelves Two left and right. One, one on the bottom right. You see it? Very bottom right. You just barely kind of make out this one down there. You might like to see it from this side. I go over and see on this side. Yeah, just around there now with the torch, you can see there is a coffin there somewhere as well. And a wreath on the middle shelf there. There's a wreath on the middle shelf, is there? Yeah. This where my torch is now. Yeah. And I would say... It's because of the sunlight that's out yeah. today, you see, it's very hard to see. But that's the Vandalore, guys, mausoleum. Right, so there we have a better view, guys. That's the... from up here. You can see the church and all the area around there. So, and the, the Vandeleur Mausoleum, Colonel Crofton Vandeleur. So that's his final resting place there and all his family.
Now, from up here, we can see we have more of these old vaults here and uh, stone slabs on top of them. And I'll just show you, look at the amount that's around there. And it goes all the way up through the graveyard, look at that. And all the areas flooded there, as I was saying earlier. Um, now, the one across the way, straight across, I'll zoom in because I won't go down there to show you because it's just it's just way too wet to go down there. But that one there just in front, you can see there, you can see the timber underneath it. They've put timber um, planks underneath to raise it to support underneath because it was breaking. It, was, it would have fell apart. So there's a timber supporting that chest tomb there. So there's a few little bits here and there that you'll see, you know, that they're kind of trying to save certain ones. Now this is the Vandalore mausoleum. You can see the side of it here. Now what that is, I don't know. That's leaking out of the side of it. Is it water, or is it from coffins, or what is it? And there's a load here as well. Look at that. That's coming out of the mausoleum there. Because the rest of it looks dry, but it's only the bottom parts that are kind of, the bottom parts are leaking like that. Here's another one. You have a loving memory of Kathleen Chambers, who died in 1945, erected by her husband, William. So it's all those graves. And actually, do you know something? If you'd show them the pattern of some of those tombs, you can see the, how much the water has corroded the stone itself by the waves on the stone. Yeah, there's kind of wave marks on them, you know, like where the water lodged. There's one over there even, like, so that's how far. Um, I'll just show you an example there at the top of this. Yeah. You can see where the water marks are on it. And the inscription is completely gone. It's all the rain that we had in the last couple of weeks as well. Didn't help, so. It's had about four weeks of rain every single day. Like. Every single day, yeah. Right. So this is the back of the mausoleum. So you can actually walk around the side of it here. So I'm not walking on graves or anything like that. Um, there's another one there across the way, erected by Thomas the memory of his beloved wife, Margaret. Another vault just there. So it's a huge graveyard, isn't it? Yeah. Really, really big Never in area. Never seen so much tomb slabs in my life. Never seen so many, no. Oh. There's an awful lot. There's hundreds, of, actually hundreds of graves here. Hundreds of graves in this place. So I just found that interesting. I wanted to show you a couple of the old graves and uh, the Vandalore mausoleum just there where we're looking inside look at that so the amount of money they had back in the day to erect a mausoleum like this in the 1800s and it's sad when you think about it you know this i always say it's the two sides of life the rich and the poor here you can see the rich side of life and here you can see the poor side of life, the unfortunate ones that, you know, their graves fell apart. But. And it would, in fairness, take a huge amount of funding. A huge amount, yeah, donations. To start. But if even all the people in the area got together, like all the businesses and stuff, yeah. got together and donated a couple of, couple of euros between them all, and. Like you, want to poor. you know. This is in memory of James Wallace, age 75, his wife Ellen, and their grandson Michael, who died age 4, 1943. Look at that. Sad. Yeah. Four years of age. And down here it says, erected by Peter Pender. Sad, isn't it? Sad, that's what I'm saying. You know, it's so sad. But, you know, I my motto in life is, uh, about death as well, is... You can't bring it with you. You know, you can't. Shrouds don't have pockets. Um, shrouds don't have pockets. And as you know, I always say, 
we all go out the same way we came in. We come into the world with nothing and we leave this world with nothing. That's my motto on that. So, you know, it's just... But even, like, how, you know, how bad this place is decayed, you can still see just how beautiful it is. Like, nature is reclaiming. And I suppose that is the way of the world. You can't stop nature. Like, you have that man that's buried in the mausoleum and his family and... I mean, I've victimed all those people during the famine times. Over a thousand people and... It's all really money. It's greed. Money and greed. He wasn't getting paid for his rent. And actually, just to bring that around about the famine, we actually have the ruins of a soup kitchen from the famine up here. Yeah, we'll go up and show you that there now before we go. Um, just to bring it full circle. Just to bring you around, yeah. We'll show you this a uh, ruin. Yeah, it's an old soup kitchen from the famine. It's the actual uh, site of an old soup kitchen. You can imagine all those people back in the famine days to be evicted from their houses and nowhere to go. How things have changed now. You know, things have changed. Like, you know, now people, I suppose, there's laws now, you know, that you can't be evicted from your home. Um, but back then, you know, you, you didn't have a chance, really. You were just told to get out, and that's it. And that's why a lot of people left Ireland. They left to go to America for a better life, yeah. Um, that's the Dillon one there. Put the red brick on it. The Dillon vault. I might just go over and look at this. You can see here where the slits are, there's crosses in them there. I don't know what I see in here, guys. So just down there, guys, you can see on the left is a bones there. See the two bones on the left? And then you have um, bits and pieces of coffins there. There's, like, there's a cross there as well. You can see the cross. Um, and handles and stuff. And I don't know what else is around the area. Yeah. They're all broken, really, the coffins. And But there's two bones over there, definitely, in the corner of that. So that's the Dylan one. So I'll just go down here and show you this one as well. This is uh, the red brick chest tomb there. Bits broken off that. There's one or two more vaults over there. Right guys, so just here in the area, you can see the railing going down around there. This is uh, the site of the Great Famine Soup Kitchen. So when you see these walls going on around here, this was a building here. It was the old soup kitchen during the famine where they used to give people soup and um, feed them during the famine. And you can see the plaque there. Site of Great Famine Soup Kitchen. And there's a cross over here. Um, dedicated to the memory of all those buried in this churchyard, both named and unnamed. A Celtic cross they erected there in memory of all the people in the churchyard that's buried here. But there's all the old walls there of it. An old soup kitchen back in the famine days, sad times. And we see there there was probably another shed or some kind of building there as well. And we have a cat over there and it wouldn't be a cemetery visit for GV without seeing a cat I suppose. He's underneath the tree there, he can see, can I zoom in and show you? There's our friend under the tree looking out.
I don't know what that is there in front. It looks like it's just a pile of stones, maybe. I don't know if that's a grave. There's a pile of stones there. So guys, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here because we're kind of, um, we're moving on to another location. We've been traveling around, getting as many videos as we can for you guys. So um, thank you for all your support and watching the videos. And if you like this video guys, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. The bell will let you know when I upload another video. And anybody that's new to the channel here also, please comment below. Let me know where you're from. I like to read the comments and uh, interact with people. So saying that guys, I'll talk to you all soon. I'm on the road. We're heading on again. So take care. God bless. Talk to you soon.